Southern cooking queen Paula Dean. Since revelations of her racist remarks, she's been dropped by the Food Network and several companies who no longer want her endorsements or to sell her products. And then there was this from Paula. I is what I is, and I'm not changing. And I... There's someone evil out there that saw what I had worked for, and they wanted it. Well, after that dramatic television interview earlier this week, can Dean even hope to bounce back? With me is crisis management advisor Peter Firestein of Global Strategic Communications, uh, who works with executives and companies to spot risks to their reputations. He's also author of Crisis of Character. So, Peter, you know a lot about this. I'm sure you've been following this Paula Dean disaster, essentially. Can she bounce back? Um, she can bounce back, but I think not in traditional ways. I think she has very good representation now, and uh, that's good. Um, what do you know about Smith and Co What do you know about them? What I know about them is they have represented a wide variety of uh, people who need help, from Monica Lewinsky to Michael Vick to um, a friend of General Petraeus. Mm -hmm. And, um, and they they've keep, been very good. Well, they keep coming to her um, for a reason, and so one has to uh, view that only with admiration as another consultant. Okay, so what does she need to do? What does Paula Dean need to do then, or what, what should she be, be being advised right now? Well, you know, there is a communicate, crisis communications playbook, and I'm sure that they're advising her that she needs to, in a sense, uh, develop empathy. She needs to highlight the companies that are staying with her and so on. But for me, Betty, she has um, an immense opportunity. I mean, I think that uh, she is a victim of our tendency towards public shaming. And um, I think it has to do with a tendency in our society in general to throw um, everybody um, out, to, to banish from the kingdom anyone who has fallen in a certain way. Mm -hmm. Like using the N-word at any time in history, regardless of uh, um, the background. And I think, well, I think what she... To, okay, when it comes to issues of race in this country, though, uh, it's very difficult, though, would you agree with me, to bounce back from something like that then let's say if you were found to have embezzled money or you were found to have done insider trading like Martha Stewart was or you were found to have had an affair. It's a little bit of a different category. Yes, well, um, one should never use the N-word. The question, Betty, is what's the punishment? Is it the same punishment for someone who, well, someone who truly, truly uses it in hate mm. as it is for someone who grew up in the Jim Crow South and for whom as a child her relationship to racism was more or less the relationship of a fish to water. She didn't even know it was there. Right, it was in the context. Well, you know, she is, she's an amazing irony. I mean, she has gotten to where she is, not through some elaborate corporate plan originally, though it became that. She got there by being herself by being authentic. Well, and what you were saying was that her sort of her series of apologies, taped apologies, apologies that came out on YouTube on Friday and then maybe even perhaps up to her Matt Lauer interview uh, seemed sort of unguided, was it? I mean, it was just sort of her alone and, and, or, and it didn't seem like there was any kind of big team behind her? Well, even Ms. Smith can't control Matt Lauer. And um, I, I personally didn't think that was a balanced view of, of Paula Dean. But you have to realize that in we are in the way? middle of... In what way? Um, there wasn't much said um, on her behalf except to allow her to, uh, to apologize in her authentic, cheerful way. And there's another side to her story that has to be told. Mm -hmm. And I think that all the people who have condemned her um, can benefit from that. Uh, Peter, I want to play for you. You know, we had our, we actually have been sort of uh, on a food theme all week long okay. with our Titans at the Table special. And we actually had talked with several of Paula Dean's colleagues on the Food Network. Mari Batali is one, the, uh, of course, the famed chef uh, and also star of ABC's The Chew. And he, I had asked him, you know, about reputation and brands. And I just want to play for you what he said about when you're trying to build your brand. It takes you 20 years to build a brand and three bad days to wreck the entire thing. It was almost as if he might have foresaw what was going to happen to Paula Dean. But these people and the, and, and the way they build their brands, uh, it is just that precarious, right? It can just sort of go away that quickly. 
Well, I think you have to give it time. It, it goes very bad very fast. And uh, this gentleman was giving one of the great um, dictums of public relations is you can build, use a century, take a century to build your reputation and a moment to lose it. Yeah. But then there's a moment after that and a moment after that. And it has to do with the narrative that, the legitimate narrative that you tell. And I think that a lot of value to Paula Dean and to all of us lies in, under, in our understanding what has gone into her having said um, the N-word at yeah. one point.